Hello and welcome to the first ever deck tech on this channel. I'm your host, The Casual Dex, and today we'll be going over one of my favorite ADH decks, Verena Lich Queen. Our commander here costs one colorless, white, blue, and a black for a 4-4 zombie wizard that reads, whenever you attack with one or more zombies, draw that many cards, then discard that many cards, and you gain that much life. This commander also has an activatable ability for the cost of two colorless and exile two cards from your graveyard to create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. If you enjoy the video, please comment, like, and subscribe, as I greatly appreciate the support, and it lets me know what kind of content to continue making in the future. The idea of this deck is tons of zombies that will punish your opponents in all instances, ping them down for zombies entering the battlefield or death triggers, draw cards off the zombies you attack with, and rapidly build up your horde to snowball out of control. There are not a lot of places your opponents will be able to hide once you get the zombies flowing, forcing them to burn removal spells just for you to bring them all back from the grave over and over again, or push them into making deals for you to send your army elsewhere, all while using your graveyard as an extension of your hand. This deck runs 36 lands, with basics being 7 plains, 7 islands, and 9 swamps. We have Arcane Sanctum. Caves of Kolios, Command Tower, Glacial Fortress, Godless Shrine, Halamar Depths, Hollowed Fountain, Prairie Stream, Silent Clearing, Temple of Deceit, Temple of Enlightenment, Vault of the Archangel, and Watery Grave. Kicking in towards Artifacts, we're running Arcane Signet, Azurus Signet, Demir Signet, Elixir of Immortality, Mindstone, Orzhov Signet, Phyrexian Altar, Prismatic Lens, Soul Ring, Star Compass, and Talisman of Anarchy. Going in towards our instance, we're looking into Brainstorm, Crib Swap, Despark, Disenchant, Factor Fiction, and Heliod's Intervention. The enchantments we're playing with we have Call to the Grave, Endless Ranks of the Dead, Reconnaissance, Rooftop Storm, Smothering Tithe, and Teferi's Ageless Insight. This deck also runs three Planeswalkers, all Liliana of course. We have Liliana's Death Majesty, Liliana Dreadhorde General, Liliana Untouched by Death. Sorceries have Cleansing Nova, Dark Salvation, From Under the Floorboards, Fumigate, Funeral Rites, Kaya's Wrath, Knight's Whisper, Scheming Symmetry, Vindicate, and Zombie Apocalypse. Going right in towards the creatures to wrap this up, we have 27, totaling with Binding Mummy, Bone Miser, Corpse Knight, Crypt Breaker, Death Baron, Diagraph Captain, Diagraph Colossus, Forgotten Creation, Gisa and Geralt, God Eternal Oketra, Graveborn Muse, Gravecrawler, Havengal Lich, Lord of the Accursed, Lord of the Undead, Newscraft Mob, Noxus Ghoul, Plague Belcher, Prized Amalgam, Shepherd of Rot, The Scarab God, Tombbound Lich, Unbreathing Horde, Undead Augur, Vindictive Lich, Wayward Servant, and Wonder. Let's dig the grave a little deeper by going over some of the key cards and loops of the deck. These are the cards your opponents will not want to see in play, because they can lead to some serious problems for them fairly quickly once they resolve. Binding Mummy is a 2-2 zombie, with whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. This can let you swing without consequence if you manage to tap down everyone's creatures with a flood of zombie tokens, or close off artifacts opponents have open to use in response to stop your spells later on in your turn. Factor Fiction is an instant where you reveal the top five of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles, and you put one into your hand and the other into the graveyard. The flavor text on this card really fits the rest of the deck because it really has no downside to whatever pile you grab because the grave is just another hand to us anyway. God Eternal Aketra is a 3-6 zombie god that slaps twice with double strike, and whenever you cast a creature spell, you create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. When God Eternal Aketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library third from the top, 
Your opponents only hope to exile this card from hand or your graveyard to be rid of it for good. Phyrexian Altar is an artifact with sacrifice a creature, add one mana of any color. Remember our friend Gravecrawler? This goes infinite with Phyrexian Altar, as long as you control another zombie or zombie token to cast Gravecrawler from our graveyard over and over again. Now, think about any of the cards I had mentioned earlier in this video that pings opponents, gains you life, draws you cards, or creates zombie tokens for deaths or edge of the battlefield effects like Wayward Servant, Noxious Ghoul, Liliana Dreadhorde General, or God Eternal Oketra. Combined with some of the reanimation in this deck, the only thing you should really be scared of is Grave Hate. Unless someone has a way to purify the grave, you'll never be out of bodies to throw at them. Reconnaissance is an enchantment that has pay zero. Remove target attacking creature you control from combat and untap it. It neither deals nor receives combat damage this turn. Never again will you be afraid to swing in without hesitation when you can just collect your attack triggers off Arena and then pull creatures back before the damage phase with a pseudo-vigilance, or just the ones you don't want to have dying while being blocked. You can even make deals with people using this as a launch button for some favors. Sometimes opponents need a little encouragement to make a deal, or if you're not feeling as nice, just send a few undead messengers to their face. Don't forget about the pre- and post-combat phase, where this can be activated as well. Rooftop Storm is the gold card of the deck with an enchantment that lets you pay zero rather than pay mana cost for zombie creature spells that you cast. Free zombies. Free zombies. I feel this needs no further explanation on why it's in the deck. Keep in mind this does not get rid of commander tax, but a discounted 4 mana in our command zone is never a bad thing. Shepherd of Rot is a 1-1 zombie cleric that you can tap for an ability that causes each player to lose one life for each zombie on the battlefield. This sees all zombies in play, and it does hit everyone including us, but we should be alright in the health pool with this deck. You can leave it in play as a threat and activate this in response to removal as well to keep the pressure on your opponents and keep them from touching your board. The Scarab God is a 5-5 god. With at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. For two and demir colors, you can also exile target creature from a graveyard. Create a token that is a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. When the scarab god dies, return it to the owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. With enough zombies, this card is devastating to our opponents. They lose life and you get to scry through the top of your library and bottom the cards you don't want to really line up the rest of your turn. Unbreathing Horde is a 0-0 zombie that enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each zombie you control and each zombie in our graveyard. If Unbreathing Horde is dealt damage, prevent that damage and remove a 1-1 counter from it. This gets around Death Touch, and in the right moment this can come in as a huge problem that our opponents will either be forced to block or take one hell of a bite from their life total. Newscraft Mob is one of my favorite zombies to reanimate as another 0-0 creature, but this one enters the battlefield with 5-1-1 counters, and whenever a player casts a spell, you remove a 1-1 counter and create a 2-2 zombie creature token. With this card in play, you will really make your opponents think twice about what they really need to cast if you're getting to put more bodies into play and collecting other triggers from the rest of our board. And when it comes back to our turn, every one of those zombies can lead to more card draw and life gain if you have Varina in play. Zombies equal power in this deck, so the more the merrier. Wonder is a bit of a meme card in this deck, but I can't bring myself to replacing it. This is a 2-2 incarnation with flying that reads as long as Wonder is in your graveyard and you control an island, creatures you control have flying. There's not much to this card on why it's been included in this deck outside of the fact that I find the idea of flying zombies to be absolutely hilarious. Pigs may not ever get their wings, but our zombies sure can. At minimum, this is a flyer that your opponents don't want to kill, and they'll just eat the two damage a turn, or hold it back as a blocker so you actually want it to die so the rest of your creatures can take flight and terrorize the skies of the battlefield. Last but not least, we have Zombie Apocalypse as a sorcery that started my desire to build this deck in the first place. I love zombies, and this card is accurately named for the occasion. If it resolves, you get to return all zombie creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tent, then destroy all humans. 
You may be surprised just by how many creatures happen to be humans in the average commander deck, and this card is even stronger if you choose to change out something in this deck to add Grey Merchant of Asphodel. He was in here, but I had to remove him due to some complaints from opponents because of how many times I would reanimate him or just blast the whole table with sudden amounts of black devotion from my previously full graveyard after playing Zombie Apocalypse. There we have it, the first ever deck tech for the casual decks. I won't be going over any of the prices in this deck as nothing is the same forever unless it's a stamp, but I'll have a link to my tapped out profile if you'd like to look through the list again or save it for later. I'd like to throw a shout out to my buddy Sikorix Graveborn for bringing this commander to my attention, and I'd like to thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a great rest of your day. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to be alerted to future content created on this channel.